Hi, my name is Callie Chappelle, and welcome to this video about primer extension. This is made for MCDB 427, which is molecular biology at the University of Michigan. So why do we use primer extension? Well, first we use it to locate the 5' prime end of an RNA transcript. And we can't map the 3' prime end with primer extension because we're ultimately going to use reverse transcriptase, which only goes 5' prime to 3'. Prime. The second thing it does is measure steady state expression, and there are lots of examples of this that you'll learn in the class. And finally, um, another way that you can map the 5' prime end of an RNA transcript is using 5' prime S1 mapping. But it's actually a little bit more accurate than S1 mapping because um, S1 nuclease actually nibbles off the ends of this of DNA RNA hybrids, or won't digest it completely. So, um, so we find that primary extension is a little bit more of an accurate method. So let's jump right into it. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing we do is synthesize the primer. And we synthesize the primer, and usually we'll label as 5'N prime with a gamma phosphate and then T4 polynucleotide kinase. And it actually definitely needs to be, um, it needs to be uh, a gamma-labeled phosphate from ATP because the energy of an ATP actually gets used in the reaction with the kinase. All right, oops, let me just grab my, grab my pen right here. All right. After we label our primer, which I'm shown here, and, and ultimately you actually don't need to label the end of the primer. You could use a, a primer that's labeled throughout, but I'm just showing you here with a, with a 5 prime end labeled primer. Um, the next thing we're going to do is hybridize our ready labeled primer to a specific RNA molecule within an RNA sample. So we'll have an RNA sample and we'll have lots of different RNAs, but of course the primer will only anneal to the RNA that has complementary sequence, okay? So you could start out with a wide variety of RNAs and still be able to map the RNA that you're interested in based, just based on primary specificity. All right. So I've drawn here some other RNAs that are not complementary, and then here in green is the RNA that is complementary, and we've got our primer annealing in the correct orientation. All right. So after we have that, then what we're going to do is extend the primer, the then we're going to extend the primer to the five prime end of the RNA using reverse transcriptase. So we're going to extend here to down here using reverse transcriptase, and we're also going to use DNTPs. And um, alternatively, you could re use radioactive DNTPs instead of a labeled primer, because um, all we really want to label is something about this primer extension product. All right. And one thing that you should note is that we have a three a free OH. So we have a free OH here at the three prime end of our primer. And so that means that we can make this DNA using reverse transcriptase, right? So remember, in order to be able to extend and create new DNA, well, first we need to have a free three prime OH, and that can, second, we need to have a template, which is shown here in RNA. So what reverse transcriptase will do is make DNA until it falls off the end. Um, right, so because of course there's no more there's no more template here at the five prime end, so it'll fall off. And the next thing we're going to do is measure the length of the synthesized oops, synthesized DNA to see the five prime end of the mRNA. And how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is by using um, using a gel and size standards. We're going to fi figure out the size of this of this fragment that's being produced, right? So that's the primer and also the amount of newly synthesized DNA. And we can figure out the total length of the fragment by using a gel. And we already know the length of the primer, so we can figure out what this distance is here of this DNA. So ultimately the key is we, we know where the primer sequence is in the DNA, so all we have to do is count from the three prime end of the primer, which is right here, uh, to the distance, the total distance of the fragment, or this distance that I've denoted here as x, um, to figure out the, the correct number of bases, which the, which the size of the total fragment will tell us to find the plus one, or the five prime end of this RNA. And, and the reason why I'm calling it the plus one, remember, is if we have, if we have DNA, the beginning the beginning of transcription is this is the plus one, right? So this mRNA would start would start here, right? Where this is the five prime end. All right, that's why I'm saying the plus one here. So after we um, after we do this, we're going to measure the length of the synthesized DNA by separating out on a DNA gel and, and comparing to size standards. And there are two different ways that we can do this. In both cases, we're going to run a gel and compare to size standards. But in one case, the size standards are going to be known size fragments, and in the other case, we're going to do a sequencing gel. Let's take a look at known size fragments first. So here we go. We've got a, we've got a DNA gel here, and we have our size standards in this lane, and then we have our extended primer, the length of our extended primer here. And so what we can do is we can compare to size standards. So so here's our band of our extended primer. So this band represents this right here, this this piece right here. And we can see by just comparing to our size standards somewhere between 50 and 60. We don't know to the nucleotide precision from this, so what we do is we plot on semi-log paper where uh, the distance migrated here is on the x-axis, and we plot each of these size standards here, um, and then 
we use our si then we we can move over here to the right and we already know where the sizes is for all these standards so we can we can we can plot our our piece here on 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 this graph and then it'll tell us the approximate size which is in this case 57 nucleotides and then here at the bottom is our free excess primer we're going to pretend like our primer is 20 nucleotides long Let's, and that's something that you'd know because you you made the primer right so here we go we've got a we've got a big band here that shows the free access primer so primer that didn't nail to any of our rna but we'll remember was still radio label so that's the first that's the first way that we can analyze um the size of our fragment uh and the second thing that we can do is a sequencing gel so sequencing gel um the sequencing gel is a little bit interesting. So here we've got our sequencing reaction, and if you don't understand how sequencing reactions occur with, you know, dideoxynucleotides, you should definitely look that up. I'm not going to go into details here. But essentially, each of these fragments, in all four lanes, the bands are one nucleotide different in length. And the identity of the last base in each fragment is, is, is uh, given by what the band is. So, so for example, this fragment ends in an A, this fragment's going to end in a C, and this 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 uh the the uh, DNA that's contained in this in this band is one nucleotide longer than the DNA that's contained in this band. So what we can do is we can figure out. Let's say we know, for example, that this that the size of the DNA in this band is 64 nucleotides. We can actually count down to figure out what the size is here. So it would be 64, 63, 62, 61, 60, 59, 58, 57. Then go over here. This tells us that this. Um, this extended primer length is 57 nucleotides, all right? And I know this is not quite accurate. I didn't go through and count out exactly how many it is to get to 20, but we're just going to say that if we counted all of these bands, there'd be 20, there'd be whatever, 57 minus 20, and this would tell us that here we go, this is 20 nucleotides as well. Um, and the reason why we know that each band that the each band ends with the uh, nucleotide that's given in the lane is because it was the dideoxy that was added. Remember, dideoxys terminate elongation um, because it's it's lacking an OH to add to. All right. Now, what else did I want to say about this? A couple of key things that you need to know. Um, the first is that you can do any sequencing reaction as long as you know the size of each of the fragments. All right, It doesn't need to be a sequencing reaction of this primer, but oftentimes you might as well do a sequencing reaction with the same radiolibra primer that you have um, just because it's already there. Okay, So you can do a sequencing reaction of anything, but usually you'll do it of the primer. You could also take clone DNA that contains your gene to sequence, or you could even take total genomic DNA and then sequence this region using your label primer. So those are all different things that from where this um, sequencing ladder could come from. All right, so I hope that this was an educational video to you, and if you have questions, feel free to add them to the comments.